Is there a difference between podcast recordings and audiobook recordings? And will it affect how long you spend in front of the computer editing your podcast? I've got some details, I think, coming up next. Hey there, podcaster. My name is The Shan Man, radio broadcaster, podcaster, and a podcast producer. And today's video is powered by Agora Pulse. And before we jump into today's topic, I want to let you know that you can find this particular video in audio blog format on my website at theshanman.com. The description is down below in uh, YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. So go on over there and check it out, and you can listen to it in audio blog format. Also, I want to let you know that I have a brand new podcast that is available right now everywhere except for Apple Podcasts only because Apple Podcast takes forever to update and list everything into their platform. So I'm still waiting on that. But you can find those links down below. It's a podcast called The Swing Shift Side Hustle. And it's a podcast that talks to people who have a side hustle. They're working maybe a full-time job, and then they have a side hustle job, like podcasting, or maybe they're in a band, or maybe they have an apparel company. It doesn't matter what it is. It's some type of side hustle. And I interview them and talk about uh, what it takes to be in that side hustle and what it takes to be uh, motivated enough to maintain that side hustle as well. So again, if you are interested in it, you can go ahead and click the links down below. The first few interviews are uh, with rock stars because it is a collaborative effort with the radio station that I'm working for, and I'm more than happy to be doing it with them. So let's talk today about the difference between podcast recordings and audiobook recordings. And believe or not, there's actually a difference in how you present yourself on the microphone uh, for a podcast recording or an audiobook recording. Now, I think there's this big misconception with a lot of podcasters in the editing process or even in the recording process, thinking that the recording has to be absolutely pristine, and this is just not the case. Most podcasters are looking to do a podcast like a radio show, and most radio shows have tons of imperfections. They have ums, they have uhs. They have noises in the background. They have crying babies. There's trucks and sirens in the background. Those are just things that are, un that are unavoidable. And the reason why I say they're unavoidable is because on live radio, I make a mistake almost every night. I maybe mispronounce something. Maybe I get some information wrong. But the beauty behind that is that I can recover off of it going into my next break and tell someone, hey, I was wrong or I made a mistake. But there are imperfections. And I think that is the one thing that really connects me with my audience is that there's that transparency. They know that I'm live and that I'm not recorded. And it, it brings together, I guess, more of a unified uh, community uh, whenever they're listening to you because they know that you're not perfect at all. Even though we would like to be perfect, you're not perfect. So. The first style of delivery is podcast oral delivery. And just know that you're going to have those imperfections. And you shouldn't be spending your time removing the imperfections because you'll spend hours trying to get those out of your podcast recording. I know there are podcasters and podcast editors that uh, will criticize me for this. But the difference between me and them is that I've been doing this for 18 years. And this is the style that I have been uh, used to for over almost, I'm coming up on 19 years. and. It's just something that you, you you go with over time. You don't worry about it. People will love you no matter what, no matter how many mistakes there are, okay? Now let's talk about the difference with a different style of, I guess, oral delivery. Let's say you're creating a storytelling podcast. Storytelling might be a little bit different, okay? Now, if we're doing a storytelling podcast, there may be a script that's involved, there may be actors that are involved, and there may be multiple takes that are involved. And the delivery into the microphone is way different than, say, that of a talk show, only because a storytelling podcast might be more like, I guess, an NPR-style of, uh, of, of, of reporting or maybe storytelling. There's less imperfections, it's more scripted out, and you would read it more like an audiobook, okay? Now, let's talk about the standards for audiobook. They're a little bit different for audiobooks, if you're submitting something to say like Audible for you know for Kindle or whatever, I think you can listen to things on Kindle, but mainly for Audible. And the standards are a little bit different when it comes down to recording. You're going to be getting some copy from a client or someone, and you're going to be reading into the microphone at a certain pace. You want to maintain a certain pace throughout the entire recording. And of course, with that, it means that you're having to read the words verbatim. Okay. Now this is very similar to a storytelling podcast. 
podcast, but you're just reading and you're having to use some type of inflections or different types of inflections within the recording. Now, I'm not a pro at at voiceovers for audiobooks, but I know that I can hold my own. And every voiceover artist that I have ever followed, because I, there was something that I wanted to get into, they all say the same thing, that there is a different style of delivery when it comes to an audiobook. You can check out the different styles of deliveries just by looking up uh, different audiobooks in Audible and see how they are delivered. It also de- depends on the tone of the book as well. It depends on the voice itself. Maybe the voice needs to be excited. Maybe the voice needs to be a little bit younger. Maybe the voice needs to be a little bit older. It all depends. But also, you need to look at the website acx.com if you want to get into audiobook recordings because they have a, a list of standards and requirements for the audiobook submissions for the pieces of audio, if that makes sense. So these requirements are just a little bit different than the requirements for Apple Podcasts, but they're not that big of a difference. However, Apple Podcasts gives you a little more leeway. It's a little bit more. You can make podcasting whatever you want it to be, okay? Audiobooks, different story. It all is based on sales, all right? And if you don't do a quality recording, which is going to require a lot more editing, and it's going to require a little bit more equalization and normalization in the audio wave file itself, then it all relates back to sales. So there is a definite difference in how you deliver and how you edit your pieces of audio. Now, why am I concerned with this? I told you in the beginning, it's because most podcast editors spend way too much time editing a podcast. Now, don't Don't get me wrong, I do believe that you should edit out your podcast. You should be editing out ideas. And sometimes in a podcast recording, just like one I edited just this last week, there was a mistake within the podcast that the host had told me, go to the 27 minute mark and she makes a mistake over and over and we need to clean that up and we started off from that point. Okay, that's where you would need to edit. Maybe you would need to edit certain gaps to where it sounds like the pauses are a little more natural. That's when I would go in and do editing. But as far as the content is concerned, I don't edit out the ums, the uhs, the breasts, nothing like that, because I want it to sound as natural and like the radio as much as possible. If it's chopped up and you're butting words up against each other, it sounds very robotic and it's just to me, it's a poor listening experience. So if you like this video, go ahead and leave it a thumbs up. And of course, uh, leave a comment down below and I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe down below and hit that little bell button so that you can get notified when I drop a brand new video onto this YouTube channel. I would really appreciate it. And of course, if you're looking to start a podcast for the very first time and you need some details on how to start that podcast, there is a link down in the description below to a an essential equipment guide list that I have made just for you so that you can figure out how to get this podcasting journey started. And of course, don't forget to check out my brand new podcast, The Swing Shift Side Hustle. Links are down in the description below. Let me know what you think of it. It's available on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and on my website. It'll all be there. And when it's listed on Apple, I will also list it there too. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll talk to you soon.